Monkey. It is time. This is an infinite investment game. I talk about alternative investments and collectibles. This is not particular investment advice, but if you watch this, you'll be a better collector and investor, not just short term, but long term as well. And also, please like, comment, and subscribe and share this with as many people as possible so we can beat the, al the YouTube algorithm. All right. So before I move on, um, a few other things. I'm trying to get to 400 subscribers and I'm planning to do some kind of the giveaway. Um, so once I get over 400 subscribers, I will pick a a person by random through chat and give a card away. I'm thinking it's probably going to be a UFC or a soccer card. Um, and then also I will have a survey down below. If you guys could do it for me, please. I will greatly appreciate it. Um, I am a Yale PhD graduate student and I do neuroscience research specifically in a decision-making lab. And I'm doing multiple projects, but one of them is image valuation, where I'm trying to find out specific reasons of like physical characteristics of why we put place value on physical objects. And it's going to be very basic as far as the surveys with food. But if we find any differences or anything unique with the answer choices, um, it'll allow me to go deeper and look more into it and actually create an experiment or multiple experiments and studies. And um, even possibly go into collectibles and figure out why people find certain physical attributes of cards appealing in a sense. All right, so yeah, um, I want to do this video. Uh, Bill Russell is a, a player that I greatly revere. Um, I feel like he's not talked about enough when it comes to basketball, when it comes to, to the sports card hobby. And I really just appreciate not only what he's done in sports cards, but like I'm African-American, um, his role in civil rights, um, just his role in just making the world a better place. Um, I do have a rookie card of his. I'm not planning to sell it. So, but I wanted to educate some people um, on his cards and yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoy this and hope, hopefully you guys really learn something about his cards. And we're, we're, here we go. Learn from Bill Russell. Wow. So he said, when I played, I could score the ball. I could handle the ball. And I could pass the ball, but it was really important in order for us to win. I had to look at my teammates and say, okay, there's other players here that do that better. But I remember as a kid, I used to see fields of marijuana. Nobody knew what it was for. Except all the animals were walking around smiling. <laughs> Bill Russell, the man, is someone who stood up for the rights and dignity of all men. He marched with King. He stood by Ali. When a restaurant refused to serve the black Celtics, he refused to play in the scheduled game. He endured insults and vandalism but he kept on focusing on making the team teammates who he loved better players and made possible the success of so many who would follow. And I hope that one day in the streets of Boston, children will look up at a statue built not only to Bill Russell, the player, but Bill Russell, the man. So more important than any points Bill Russell scored on the court are the points he scored for civil rights. If not for his career as one of the best defensive players in the NBA, though his voice and impact might not have been amplified until Jordan arrived onto the scene. NBA and not analysts widely consider Bill Russell the best basketball player ever. The circumstances under which he played might cause fans to suggest that he should still hold that title. So he was born in 1934, and I'm going to do a this intro and then I'm going to go into his actual cars, power reports, what they sell for, things like that. And some cars that people don't really talk about that I think are very great to add to your collection or if you want to invest in. Um, so born in 1934, he was born in the South uh, where he grew up in the projects of Louisiana. Um, he was poor, but determined. His only weapon was his library card, which he used often to educate himself and oral history of 
interview for the Civil Rights Project at the National African American History Museum in 2013. Russell explained that his earliest childhood memory was that his parents loved him. He believed that if his parents loved him, he must be okay. And if others had a problem with him, the problem must be within them. This realization formed his character and built confidence that could help him become one of the most transformative and enduring figures of his era. Russell's youth shaped his activism while he was growing up in Louisiana. He recalls hearing the Ku Klux Klan torturing and screaming black men in the woods until his grandfather fired his gun to scare them off. He also recalls buying lumber from a hardware store with his grandfather to help build a schoolhouse. The salesman refused to sell it to, to them and told them that they did not need an education to pick cotton. They eventually built a schoolhouse which taught Bill resilience in the face of hatred. His grandfather never had access to a school. His father dropped out in the sixth grade. Bill graduated from college and his daughter graduated from Harvard Law School. So progress, which he takes great pride in. All right, so here is his first card. So this is 1955 All-American Sports Card Club. Um, number 61, this is a PSA 10 hand cut, very rare. So in 1954, uh, the Bill Williams started the American All-American Sports Club in California. The club attracted members, often referred to giveaway the prizes that included MLB players, sign gloves and bats, and official NCAA basketball and MLB equipment. Um, and one of the best deals in trade card history, a $1 membership fee entered the club members into a contest to win a prize and entitled each member to receive 500 sports hero pitchers, a lifetime membership in the club, and a membership button, and a subscription to the club news bulletin. Um, the 500 cards of the members received from $1 formed what collectors now refer to as the 1955 All-American Sports Club hand cut set, which arrives in the mail in sheets of 32. The set contains and includes Bill Russell, Mickey Mantle, Jack Kramer, Sam Sned, um, Jackie Robson, Yogi Berra, Willie Mays, Duke Snyder, Pee Wee Reese, um, Frank Gifford, and George Mikan. Um, here is the population report. There's only two PSA 10, so this car is very, uh, it's going to be very hard to get your hands on this, especially now if you pass away. But um, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is really his first ever card ever. I mean, even if you get an authentic. And then as far as prices, though, um, that the authentic was $92. Um, but there's only two higher for PSA 9. I mean, even if you bought a authentic or PSA 1 or 2, there's still only 24 higher than those. So it's very, very low population. You're rarely going to see these. Um, but I think it's really nice to have a car like this in your collection. And this is what they've been selling for as of more recently. Um, also, I'm going to say, it's probably not the best idea to just go out and buy a Bill Russell card um, just because normally when players pass away, their stuff really goes up. Um, but then it, then it goes down at levels back out. Um, and then it, it becomes more normal and more incremental. So I think just wait some months and then this stuff kind of may go back to normal and then you can pick up his cards. So... Um, the, the, the original card we consider as rookie is 1957 Tops, number 77. That's his most iconic card. So in 1938, the four sons of Brooklyn entrepreneur Moores Shorn decided to revive their father's tobacco business by creating Tops Chewing Gum Incorporated. 
the Shorens um, sons translated tops, the name of a candy company they absorbed to mean being the tops or the best in the business. In 1952, top salmon Cy Berger designed top's first set of baseball cards at a kitchen table in Brooklyn. His design transformed the trading card industry, setting off a collection frenzy that would last decades. By 1957, Topps had already produced five stunning baseball sets, purchased Bowman, and established itself as a manufacturing powerhouse for trading cards. In 1957, Topps designed his first baseball basketball card set. Since Russell's uniform is not visible in the 1955 card set, the 57 Tops issue is also considered his rookie card since it is his first appearance in the Celtics uniform and Tops did not disappoint. The card show number six, his jersey number playing defense with his hands up to block a pass and includes a distinct plate name on the front of the card as a sign of the times the players on the reverse of the card that shows his height, 6'10", um, his biography highlights, and the Olympics, and his defensive play in previous seasons. The card photo lacks resolution and centering, and snow issues are common, but these issues do not detract from the card's mass appeal. Highest card, uh, 8.5. Looks like it sells for $630,000 for PSA at least. Um, 887000 7.521000 I mean, these cards are very expensive. PSA 7, 50000 PSA 6, 22. PSA 5, 15000 um, Looks like there's only three PSA 9 cards, so it's super rare. Um, 848 688 Five hundred fifty eight. Um, I mean, all this stuff is really investment grade. Um, and then ninety nine, really from four up. And then ninety nine for PSA three hundred. Well, two hundred, based about two hundred PSA three. There may be a few that that, that end up going to PSA uh, for grading, but not not very many um, after this. Uh, so uh, there's. Not many of his cars, even if you get an authentic or PSA 1 authentic, there's only 1057 at a higher. Uh, PSA 1s apparently sell for $1,000. I remember when I bought my PSA 1, it sold for, I don't know, 5000 something like that. But anyway, um, and uh, yeah. Um, here's the BGS pop report. Um, looks like the highest for BGS for 57. Um, these are other years, but 57 is up here. The highest, there's 130 graded. Um, the highest one is a PSA 8. And then there's uh, 7.5, there's 8 of them. There's 8 7s, there's 5 6.5s, there's, you know, 6 8s. And the grade with the most graded is the 5. Um, also SGC. You know, here, uh, SGC has 226 cards graded. Um, there is one nine for SGC. Uh, there's eight eights, uh, 7.54. There's for SGC seven, there's 13. The one that's graded the most looks like is the five, which is 47 of them for SGC five. So next is 1961 Fleer, uh, Bill Russell, number 38. Um, so for this card, you know, he's now playing his sixth season and he's a winner of four NBA titles. He's appeared solo on the card. His card number is 38. The card features a headshot of Russell in a beautiful Celtics color resembling the team's logo, which predated the now famous Lechuk. Le Leprechaun. The logo shows a jester with a jagged cane in his hand and also a leaf pattern on his jacket, which you can see like here. Let 
Yeah. This is a leprechaun. The Celtics kept his his this logo designed by Red Arback Ar Brother until 1968 season when they switched to the leprechaun and the engaging flip side states that the NBA player selected Bill Russell as the player of the year and touts his rebounding and defensive skills. It's PSA 9, so for $18,000, around $18,000 here. Um, $11,000, $8,500, seven thousand twenty two hundred fifty dollars for his eight. And even his five sells for $1,750. Um, you look at pop reports, 29 looks like for PSA 9, uh, 165 PSA 8, 185 for PSA 7, 198 for PSA 6. But I mean, you even have 18 authentics. And then you have the prices here. Uh, they look around the same from PSA 4 to 6. Um, this is a nice, it's still a, a very, very nice card. Um, even if you get authentic, you still only have 1,868 higher. And it's considered a second year card. And then this is an, an action. It's in the same set of 1961 Fleer. Um, the in action card from this set features Bill Russell in flight and the route to a layup with the classic Celtics green background at the top of the card. Bios on players from this era are incredibly rare, so the reverse side provides a treasure trove of storylines from Bill Russell's playing days that will delight diehard fans. Um, so as if the play-by-play -play narrative is not enough to satisfy a collector's appetite for basketball history, Fleer wrote, in the poetic form, a style unseen on almost every other card in the industry. The narrative applauds Russell's teamwork with Bob Cousy, among other successes. The blue ensemble on the back of the card resembles, reminds collectors of Fleer magical use of colors in the set. Given the scarcity of Russell's cards, the 1961 in action offers investors and more affordable options to that collection. And then you look at here, PSA 9, um, these are cheaper for inaction. Inaction is normally cheaper for FLIR um, than the regular FLIR card, $13,000, about 13, 14,000 dollars PSA 9, 8.5, you know, 6,000, 3,500 for PSA 8. Um, and it continues to go down here where five is $725, which is more affordable for people. Um, and then in action, there's only 12 for, well, I'll go ahead and do the power of accounts right here first. So if you look at this, um, there's only 24 PSA nines. There's eight. Oh, my bad. There's, there's 153 PSA eights. The most that are graded are PSA 7, 162, 131, PSA 6, uh, PSA 5, 116, PSA 4, 124, 28. Uh, 8.5, I have here, and then 2 PSA 8, and then 7.5 PSA 6. And then seven for this is SGC here, right? So you have um, in action and then takes to the air. And yeah, like these are what you expect. So you do get 8.5s here in SGC, which would be nice to go after or eights. Um, but the most you're going to find probably in sevens or sixes for these. And also for SGC, I mean, BGS, for Beckett, 161 graded for the FLIR, and then the in action is 111 graded. Um, the highest one for FLIR is a PSA 9. In action is going to be PSA 8. You got an 8.5 here, too. So, yeah, 
Um, and then you look at what the prices are. There are a lot in the 500 range here to, to, to 1,000. From PSA 2 to PSA 6, which is really interesting. And then one in Authentic is around less than $100. Population 153, but only 22 higher for PSA 9. So, I mean, you can still get authentic, and then there's only 1,000 higher. Next, 1968 test, tops test, um, Bill Russell. So, 1968 tops test was the set that came before tops official return to basketball cards with the tall boys format. It was in 1969. Uh, we know that because Luol Cinder. Um, is the main player that people go after on that set. The test issue set includes 22 cards and is populated with plenty of Hall of Famer players. The simple black and white front design is a stark contrast to the design that Tops would use the following year. And the backs of the card contain parts of an image that can be combined to form a picture of Wilt Chamberlain while the test cards rarely surface. The Bill Russell card is particularly rare. Um, how rare, you know? Um, it's interesting that the, the test for PSA 8 is only about 25000 and then for 7, there's only 17000 I mean, they, they are still pretty expensive, but 6 is 6500 but it's very interesting. Well, it looks like only 2 for PSA 8, 3 for PSA 7, and then 6 for PSA 3. Next. 1973-74, sure, fresh bread Seattle Super Signings Bill Russell card. Um, this was like a, a rare uh, release here. Um, and his, it's like a coaching card, which is really interesting. And I don't think this is super rare, and I don't think many people are going after this. And if you can find this, it would be nice to great and have in a collection. Because, um, like, everybody doesn't have this card. Next. <laughs> Uh, there's only like two of these graded for PSA for BGS. There's two, there's a 4.5 and a two. And then for SGC, you got five graded. And then, um, one of the highest grade is a PSA four. Uh, next is a 1995 action packed hall of fame autographs, Bill Russell, number 40. Um, out of 55, a staple of early 1990s collection, Action Pack produced a brief run of Hall of Fame basketball products. Most notable was 1995 Action Pack Hall of Fame, which included one Hall of Fame autograph redemption card per box, while the base cards are nothing special. The autograph set contain an impressive group of players, including the first Bill Russell autograph card signed in silver and hand number to 500. So, so here, here's the silver autograph. It's cool, I think. Um, the gold foil card remains a popular option. Collectors should be aware that there is no base card for Bill Russell for this set. So you're going to get the autograph, you know, serial number thing. There's no base. And nobody really thinks about this card here. Um, so Bill Russell autographs, you know, got PSA here. There's, they're only three graded and they're PSA nines. And you got the autographs here. You got, these are pretty good. The addition to 9.5, seven nines, and then six, uh, 8.5 is a total of, of 17 graded. You got some lower numbers here. And then you got Bill Russell as far as total. There's three graded here, uh, 8.5 for SGC and two eights. So 1999 Upper Deck Century Legends Epic Signatures Bill Russell, uh, number BR, or Bravo Romeo. Nearly four years would pass before the hobby saw another signed Bill Russell card. Epic Signatures from 1999 Upper Deck Century Legends was one of those options. And the set offered collectors an on-card autograph with a classic design. There's only also a rare jersey number century parallel number to just six copies.
And here you still have the same thing as far as like the grading. Um, there's only a total of four graded for Bill Russell for the base. Century collections, there's two. And then uh, commemorative collections, there's two. So highest PSA 10, that'd be nice getting that. And then there's three PSA 9. So they're all high grades. Century collections, uh, PSA 9, PSA 8. And then the uh, commemorative collections of PSA 8. Uh, BGS, uh, you know, seven BGS 9.5s, 15 BGS 9s, two BGS 8.5s, and two BGS 8s. Um, and then if you look at SGC, uh, you do have only one total graded, which is one eight point five for SGC. And then we're going to get to the last one here. So even though Exquisite was more celebrated for their valuable rookie cards found in each product, many Hall of Famer players populated this checklist. So this is good for you guys to know. Among the most plentiful sign cards for Bill Russell, Exquisite uniforms feature an autographed jersey card numbered to 100. While specific exquisite options for Bill Russell do not surface often, almost any signed exquisite Bill Russell card will be good addition to a collection. It's not a 100 here, and there's autograph here. So it's a horizontal card, which is a very nice card. I didn't really find too much as far as pops counts. Um, there's a lot of these that they made for the set. Um, and it's like Bill Russell alone, but also Bill Russell with other players. And there's some I didn't include. But the one that, that's the most, the exquisite patch here is um, there's 38 total. And this is for BGS, by the way. Um, I, I didn't really, I don't think I really found much for PSA. But uh, you could get a 9.5. There's like five nines and, and 22 8.5s. BGS was normally better for thick cards anyway. Um, you have the collection number piece autographs, which is the highest is BGS 9. Obviously, there's no 10s or black labels. It's unfortunate, but the highest is 9.5. You see this with the dual Bill Russell, Larry Bird, which it could be very interesting because you're talking about two of the all-time best Celtics ever um, on a card. And then you have the dual Akeem Elijah, one Bill Russell. That's a little weird, but, you know, um, there are all-time great centers. And defensive centers of that. I mean, Akeem Olajuwon is better offensively. And you have the Bill Russell auto patch uh, here. Um, A R B R. So it has to be one of the no, it's probably one of these here. And it's probably one of these three. Yeah. So um, there's only one graded. SCC 9, so you keep that in mind as well. And yeah, um, yeah, I mean, it's a very sad day. Um, I, you know, hope things for Bill Russell and his family um, are okay and can celebrate his life and, and be able to move on peacefully. And let me know if you enjoyed the video. Um, I know it's kind of weird, like making videos, like after someone passes away and stuff like that, but, um, I do think Bill Russell is, was, was a good role model and, and in a way I looked up to him. So, you know, I, I think other people, I think it'd be worth something to actually collect him versus a lot of these modern players, but, but yeah, this is the video. Um, please like comment, subscribe.